Hi guys, uh, I worked on something here that I haven't went over with y'all. I told you that <clears throat> I work on the best information that I can for you guys. Uh, so I got something for y'all I think that's, you're going to find really interesting. Pecos, I believe, especially Will. I believe he, uh, I think we'll probably maybe see him make some comments. Uh, I think I may surprise him maybe at some of the things I found, but, uh, a lot of people talk about Bigfoot and, uh, you know, they talk about Dogman. And it seems like those two are always kind of in the same area. Uh, I wonder if there's a, you know, a mix-up of sometimes people see the Dogman and it's actually, you know, not the Dogman. Or they see Bigfoot and think it's the Dogman. The reason I'm saying this is because I, I still believe the two have two very different characteristics of attitude. The attitude that they display, I believe, is Bigfoot of curiosity, and I believe the other thing to be a little more evil, probably, uh, I think it would be homicidal, and I believe that may be what's killed a lot of the kids. It may be Bigfoot. Y'all, you know, in the descriptions, let me know what you think. You think it's Bigfoot? Am I on the right track? Do I need to look somewhere else? Uh, I'm open to suggestions always. Uh, there is a uh, a thing, uh, a 15 year old girl named uh, Doris Harrison in July of 1972. Uh, she lived in, I'm going to make sure I pronounce this right, Marzoff Hill, Louisiana, Missouri. She had a brother at the time that was eight years old. His name was uh, Terry. And then she had another brother that was five years old. They were chasing their dog, running around out in the yard and chasing the dog through the woods and so forth, like kids do, playing with their dogs. And uh, she noticed that there was a scream. And uh, when she went to the uh, window, she looked out and she noticed a bipedal monster around seven foot tall covered in hair. She said it stood at the end of the yard as her brothers ran toward the house. And what was kind of unique about this is the monster had their dog clenched under its arm dead. It had killed their dog. I felt this, you know, was interesting to me because it seems it always is interested in kids. Uh, now, I'm not saying this here is a Bigfoot because it meets the criteria of the other thing that I said. It seems to be interested in the kids. It may be a Bigfoot. What do you think? Uh, I really need your all's, you know, opinions on this because it, it does help me at kind of what I base things on and kind of how I investigate. But my little cousin, she experienced the same thing when she was around six, seven years old. Uh, she was at my grandma. She was playing something with a long, hairy arm reached out of the field grass, which will be at the edge again, where it seems to stay, motioned her to come here. Luckily, she didn't. She ran inside and told her mom uh, because she was aware that there was, you know, some scary things going on at the time there. But, uh, a lady named Doris in 2012, the 40th anniversary of the encounter, which was the first sighting of that summer of the beast. The beast was then dubbed the Momo Monster, meaning the Missouri Monster. Later on, her mom said <clears throat> she had also been chased by the monster. School children had reported seeing the monster outside of the windows during lessons in the uh, woods. And also, there was a man that was uh, chased by it. And then they had uh, another lady that was chased. And she said it would seem to be a half man, half ape. But she was definitely sure that it was not a human. And again, it was staring at her from the woods. They said that it had a really fishy smell, a skunk smell. Uh, people, you know, they, they compare it to a lot of like strong odors. Now, another thing is the, uh, 
the creature had three toes. Uh, there was a plaster taken by a local man named of uh, Clyde Penrod. He was the daughter of Christina Windmiller. She was the little girl with the brothers at the first that had heard them scream and then seen it standing at the edge of the woods with their dead dog under its arm. This all uh, was Tuesday, November 27, 1973. <clears throat> an identical monster had appeared one state down in Miller County, Arkansas from 1971 to 1974. It was dubbed the Folk Monster. It was in southwestern Arkansas, which was also is what brought on the movie Boggy Creek. If you haven't seen that, I recommend you see it. And also, The Return to Boggy Creek is, I think, really good. Uh, there was a uh, cast that was took from around the Ford House. Uh, now, now the Ford House is where the Fords were attacked by what they believed was Bigfoot that night and ended up leaving. He was actually hospitalized. I've done a video on that. You should check it out. It goes kind of in the depth of what happened there. But they uh, called to pick the Honey Island Swamp Monster cast, is what they called it. And again, this one had three toes. So, this is pretty much kind of the same occurrence, having three toes. This one here, what I would uh, probably caught some of my attention, it's not attacking a dog or an animal at this time, it's actually attacked you know, Mr. Ford. So went from animals to human. Uh, it was a retired air traffic controller. His name was uh, Harkin Ford. He was the first to report the monster actually in 1963. Iowa also had a three-toed beast that was seven foot tall that people called Bigfoot. It also had three toes. The Death Valley had a track that uh, they took a cast. It was taken by a cave. It was uh, 14 to 15 inches long. There was uh, six tracks received, recovered, and they made casts of those also. The Honey Island picture was very comparable in 1972, showing that all these animals had very unique footprints that all matched. Now, uh, as you're aware, it is by the BFRO uh, Foundation, the Bigfoot hunters pretty much, have stated that all Bigfoot prints that they have recovered to date have five toes. So this is three toes still. In South Carolina, <clears throat> pretty interesting story here. I, I think this this story was kind of caught me. Uh, they said there was a lizard man. They called him the Lizard Man of Cape or of the Swamp. Uh, it was seven foot tall with three fingers. It was described as angry, and it was attacking a car. A South Carolina woman captured a picture of the lizard man on her cell phone. Woman, woman was only identified as Sarah. Now what kind of gives this story a little uh, maybe possible truth to it is it was actually aired by WCIV ABC News Channel 4. They did uh, air her cell phone photo she had took of the lizard. Here's a picture of it. The uh, Lee County Lizard Man uh, was reported in 1988 by a 17-year-old Christopher Davis driving home from work at 2 a.m. in the morning. He had had a flat around Scape. He heard a thumping noise, turned to see a 7-foot tall bipedal creature running toward him. Now this is actually running at him. This ain't running away. It's not observing him. It's not making noises, throwing sticks, whistling. This is running at him. 
he described it as having glowing red eyes, green skin, three claws on each hand. The creature grabbed at his car as he jumped into his car. It jumped on the roof of his car as he drove down the highway, swerving his car, trying to throw it off. He actually did finally get it thrown from his vehicle. Lee County Sheriff, Mr. Liston, uh, reported 12 people had also came forward with encounters with the creature. The creature had fish scales. This goes back to one of my videos I did uh, called In the Beginning, I believe is what it was, with the first visit. Yeah, first visit video about what happened in fish skills on my uncle's car. So this this really caught my interest here. Now, July 30th of 1990, Bertha Blithers and her five children had, was driving their car down the highway in the same area, and this creature actually jumped the guardrail and attacked the passenger side of their car. So this thing's actually attacking their cars. And, you know, that's, to me, is just... It shows that it has an anger issue. I mean, 411 people said, you know, the children missing. Uh, some campers had reported later seeing, you know, a large uh, monster or something running up the hillside. They said it was something draped over its shoulders. They said, which could have been a kid. I mean, I wonder, are we dealing with two different things or the same thing? Now, there's going to be a part two on this because I uh, believe, and I'm not for sure yet, that uh, this other gentleman... Uh, I'm not going to release his name right now. I was actually attacked by it, and I believe there is good documentary evidence that he was attacked by it. And if it's true, I do want to go into that. But uh, it's it seems to me that it's possible two creatures, Pecos. I'd really, you know, like to get your opinion on this. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's two different creatures. Are they the same creature? is what a lot of people say, you know, or some of them the same, they're just, some are evil, some are bad, but if you really get into paying attention to, like, the simple things, the eye color, the glow, uh, what they look like, the footprints, you can see some character characteristic difference that some people may not notice, that a trained person may notice as making it maybe two different animals. Pecos will know what I'm talking about. Uh, I just... I think it's very interesting. I think it is scary, and I think that you should watch your kids if you're in the woods. Like the one gentleman stated, he uh, he was outside while his kids were playing uh, hide and go seek, and uh, he said he'd watch the tree the whole time, watch his you know son run run behind it. Whenever all the kids came in, they you know called for everybody to come in, and son never came in. So he walked over laughing, you know, was going to get his son. His son was gone. That's the kid that was last seen, possibly the kid going up the hill on the back of a large beast, you know. So whatever it is, it's very sneaky. It's fast enough, I think, that if it gets in and grabs the kids, you're not going to catch it. And I think the odds of finding your child alive are slim to none. Uh, so just be careful out there this summer. I know there's going to be a lot more of you out this summer. Uh, be aware of your surroundings. I would go to campsites, you know, where there's more people. I wouldn't camp out alone. I'm planning on an expedition that's probably going to be by myself. Uh, I'll be deep in the woods in uh, what we call the payment grounds. Uh, Pecos will know about that. I'm planning on doing an overnight camp there by myself and try to gather some evidence. Uh, I've been told not a good idea, but that's one of the only ways we're going to find out anything. So, Anyways, guys, I hope you found this really interesting. If you like this and want to see the second part of what I'm coming up with, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss it, so you'll get a notification. And again, thanks for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let your friends know about us. The more you know, subscribers we get, the more it helps the channel continue. And we're going to try to bring you nothing but the truth. I appreciate it, guys. We'll talk to you next time.